Today we're going to look at photographing water rails. It's a very secretive species, lives deep in the reed beds and it is possible you, you've got them on a local patch but you don't know they're there. It's a species that is prone to coming in front of wooden permanent highs on nature reserves. This one for instance is taken at Slimbridge in Gloucestershire and this particular hide has very low viewing slots so you can see that I'm almost down at ground level to photograph it. But if you want to photograph your own water rails, the first thing you've got to do is find one. Now during the spring they can be quite noisy, they have this pig-like squeal. But during the winter they can be more silent and there could be water rails in that reed bed on the right hand side but you just wouldn't know it. But one of the things you can do is just play the calls of a water rail on your mobile phone for five seconds then switch it off and sit and listen. And there's an excellent chance if there's a water rail in that reed bed it will call back at you. It won't approach you, you won't get photographs as a result of doing this, but at least you'll know you've got a water rail present. And then you can start thinking about how to photograph it. First step, you've got to find a suitable spot. Here the water is relatively shallow and you can get into it and the water rail can, can get into it as well. You've got access, you haven't got a steep bank to climb down, it's a shallow bank. So uh, this is a very good spot to photograph water rails. It also catches the light as well. So the first step is to start to feed it. In the past, bird photographers have used casters. These are the pupa of maggots. You buy them from fishing tackle shops by the pint. Uh, I always used to feel that although they ate them, they never really liked casters. They ate them because they were desperate in the winter when it was cold. But today you can feed them with mealworms. They're far more readily available than they used to be. And even these freeze dried mealworms you can buy from the pet food shops. And uh, you just scatter those around the bank. And every time I do it, every time I go to feed it, I whistle. And it's amazing how quickly birds will become to associate you turning up and whistling with food appearing. And within two or three days, they can, they can catch on to this. So you just start to feed them in one spot. And it could even be the next day that they, the bird has already realized there's some food appearing in the, a regular spot. Once you know the bird is there by just sitting in the distance and watching through the binoculars, you've now got to think more specifically about how you're going to photograph it. Well, the water here is a little bit too deep for the water rail. They, they do swim, but to have it posing nicely, I've got to somehow create some sort of perch. So I've got a plank of wood about three feet long, and I stretched that out across the water, and I started to put the mealworms onto the plank of wood. I'm encouraging the water rail to walk the plank and they do this very readily and once you've got to this stage they're going to come and feed every 10-15 minutes so there's the plank of wood and what I want is the water rail to stand at the right hand end in the middle of this bit of water so I haven't got any background if the bird is over on the left hand side of the plank I'm going to have the grass behind him I want just water behind the bird I did experiment by putting this water reed on top of it. It didn't work photographically, it didn't look any good, but you don't really realize that until you go and sit behind the camera. So that had to come off. And the other problem here is the sun was shining too much. So you've got those ripples of light on the bird's breast as the light has bounced off the water. So I didn't like that particular lighting. I've got to wait for the sun to go behind the cloud a little bit to give me a, a softer lighting but I'm slowly sinking the plank into the water. But at the end, I've put this bit of bark. And the idea of the bark is there's grooves in it, so I can put the mealworms into the grooves, and you can't see them, but the plank has now disappeared under the water. It's weighed down with a couple of stones. And then the only last problem to solve is water rails are not great posers. They walk out to the feeding spot where all your mealworms are and then their heads go down and they're like a vacuum cleaner. They're just sucking up mealworms. They do not pick their heads up. The head is down, pecking away, and when they've had their fill, when they've eaten as much as they want to eat on that particular session, then they just turn around and walk out very quickly. So they don't really pose. And there's various solutions you can try to solve that. For instance, you start squeaking your lips at them making little clicking sounds to try and get them to lift their heads up and look at you. 
but it's amazing how quickly birds become accustomed to sounds coming from a hide. So the best way to do it is just restrict the amount of food you put out. Initially you put in a handful of mealworms every, every time you go out to feed them. Now when you're ready to photograph and the light is perfect, just put three mealworms. Just hide the mealworms away in the bark and then when the water owl comes he eats those three mealworms and then he picks his head up and he looks around him to say hey where's the rest of them and this is quite often the secret to get nice poses out of birds you underfeed them remove the food so they have to look around for it you get a better pose and that's it that's my water rail photography